we have a big stinky problem that I've only just realized maybe the past few travel days. Stinky. And it's not Daisy. I first noticed this problem about a month ago. He didn't really notice it because he has no sense of smell. I, however, have a like really keen sense of smell. So it started to bother me and I noticed it mostly on travel days. Yeah, which was really weird because our black tanks are usually completely flushed before a travel day. And of course, I don't smell it at all right. because I sucked in too much jet exhaust in the 80s and 90s. <laughs> the problem was when we would stop for lunch or like a rest stop break or whatever, I would walk in, I'd open the door, and I would be like punched in the face by what smelled like black tank, like sewer. And I kept saying to Chad, like, where is the smell coming from? Because our tanks are empty, you flush them, mm -hmm. and it just smelled so bad. So then I started getting this fear of, does our RV stink all the time? <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't quite sure what it was, so I did reach out to our friend Todd, who is an instructor at the NRVTA. We just did a video on that a couple weeks ago, so check that out. And he thought perhaps it might be when we're traveling, the water might be splashing out of our P-traps. We have a P-trap here in the kitchen sink. We also have one under the bathroom sink. And if the P-trap is out of those, it's just like a house. It lets mm -hmm. the gases from the tank in. And I actually smelled mm -hmm. this, the odor more right around here than I did in the bathroom. So that makes some sense. Yeah. Another thing that can cause this kind of smell from your gray tanks is if you have a broken air admittance valve. There's a little valve underneath the sink that allows water to flow through and lets air in this way, but not this way. And if that's broken, you'll have a smell all the time, not just on travel days. But we had been sitting on the cure <laughs> for a long time. You may have seen in some of our older videos where we talk about water management that we love Happy Camper. It's a great tank treatment, but it's just for odors. It mm -hmm. doesn't clean anything. It's some kind of uh, active bacteria or something that helps, whatever. Yeah. It's mainly for odors. Well, Happy Camper reached out to us saying, hey, we love that you're promoting our product. We'd like to give you some stuff. And they sent us some more Happy Camper and they also sent us some of this. But full disclosure, we don't have a partnership with Happy Camper. No. We've just been using their product since we started mm -hmm. and we like it. So when we talk about it, it wasn't because we were an affiliate with them. They did send us just one of these to try out, which we did. And we liked it so much that we bought four more. Yeah, we, we just had that aha moment of, hey, we've got this tank treatment cleaner. It's even extreme. It's even extreme. <laughs> Let's give it a shot on the gray tank and see what happens. Because we happen to be traveling two days in a row. Mm -hmm. So the first travel day, I was like, there's that smell again. Let's fix this problem. And then we thought, well, tomorrow, let's try it out. Yep. So I treated the tank and the results were instant. They were. Yeah. They really were. No more smells mm -hmm. at all. So we said, hey. Oh, but wait. But what I thought was really interesting was when you flushed it after you yeah, did the treatment. Yeah. You only tried it on this gray tank. Kitchen gray. Kitchen we have, gray. We have four waste tanks, two gray and two black. And we tested it on this one. Get the hot water going here. Five gallon bucket, so I'm gonna fill it up to about here. Once this starts getting full, I'm just gonna start dumping this in. I'm gonna turn on the fan in case there's any powder. When I use the other powder, it makes me sneeze. Causes skin irritation, causes serious eye irritation, may cause respiratory irritation. So I'm gonna keep it down in here. I'm doing it kind of like the other treatment. I'm just kind of sprinkling it in, hoping it dissolves itself for the most part. So I don't have to go find something to stir it. I don't want to dump this too fast in here because I don't want it to run up into the other sink. We have our stuff stowed in there for travel day. So I'm gonna dump this out and I'm gonna keep an eye out for any powder. And if there is, I'll just put more water in to dissolve that powder. I don't see any undissolved powder, so that's good. Oh, I'll take the back, there's a little in there. That's okay, I'll dissolve it in the next round.
after flushing it and after doing it, the water comes out clean. Mm -hmm. So I was really surprised after putting this treatment in with about 10 gallons of water, when I dumped it, it was brown. It looked like black it tank. It looked like black tank water. We just finished driving with the cleanser in there. And that's what we got. That's incredible. Even though I have a cover over the sink drain to catch food particles and stuff, you can imagine the stuff that still gets caught going down that drain and into that gray tank. So it makes sense that a lot of times that's where your odors are coming from, not necessarily your black tank. We've been in this RV since full time, every day since December of 2017, and we've never, ever, ever cleaned our tanks. So bad, bad on us. <laughs> we really haven't had an issue or a need to. And just until recently so yeah you know i mean it's, it's great them. timing yeah we flushed them but we haven't actually cleaned them mm -hmm. with, a, with a good chemical like this yeah so we went ahead and bought four more because it's one treatment per tank so what we're going to do is we're going to do all four tanks i've got them all completely dumped and flushed some nice clear water coming out of the kitchen gray tank clear water coming from the black tank in the back Two more tanks to flush, then we can do this test. And we're going to test it three ways. Right. We've already tested one way, which is during a travel day. Which is the most recommended way yeah. from Happy Camper. We're actually going to retreat the same kitchen gray again, because mm -hmm. I'm curious to see if we still get more out of it. Mm -hmm. I'm sure we're going to get a lot out of our black tanks. And I'm curious to see what we get out of our front gray tank, which is really just the shower and the front sink. And the, and the washing machine. And the washing machine. So it's really all just soaps and stuff going in there. The other thing we're going to do is we're going to check our sensors. Mm -hmm. Because our sensors haven't worked since like the second week. I mean, you guys area. know how that is. They just don't work. Tank sensors, they don't really ever work. But the preferred method is, yeah, travel day, because you're getting the most agitation, and it's really the agitation that gives you the most cleaning. You're driving around, the water mm -hmm. sloshing. So that plus the cleaner really gets it clean. So we've done that method. It mm -hmm. worked great. Mm -hmm. If you are someone that doesn't travel that often, maybe you stay in a seasonal site for several months at a time, but you want to do this, we're going to try a different method. Mm -hmm. The other method they recommend is to rather than filling it up halfway or 10 gallons is to fill it all the way and leave it overnight and actually the old can said overnight and the new one says 24 to 36 hours okay so we're going to do our rear black tank that way because we don't have to use it we can let it fill up and we can let it sit right and we also invented a third way <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're going to do a manual agitation we're going to fill our other tanks about halfway maybe a little bit more than halfway and then we're going to actually use our jacks. It ought to be a fun <laughs> ride inside this RV. We're going to create some agitation with our jacks because we've done manual leveling before. Mm -hmm. And honestly, when you put the jacks down, it can create quite a bit. Yeah. So you'll get and to see that. Quite honestly, we didn't feel like packing it up and doing all of that and just driving around aimlessly for an hour or so. Especially not with 30 mile an hour winds. And yes, and we wanted to get this information out to you guys. This process is not that difficult. You do need a bucket that can hold about three to five gallons. Obviously a five gallon bucket does the trick. The directions say put three to four gallons of hot water in a bucket then add and mix the entire container. I've got a stir stick this time. I'm gonna get the hot water going. This is a five gallon bucket, so I'm gonna do it somewhere between two thirds and four fifths full for three to five gallons. Mix it in, dump it down the tank, you add water. It's not that complicated. We have a 12 gallon water heater, so by my calculations, I should be able to do four tanks at three gallons, so it's three to four gallons. I'll probably let it heat up in between just so I get good hot water. Waiting for the wind. Jeez. This is the only time that slide toppers are not beneficial as in high winds because they start kicking around. You can, you can hear them. So the mix is all done. It's pretty simple. You just dump it into the tank. And remember, this is only about three or four gallons. And then depending on which version of the instructions you read, it'll say add another five to seven gallons. I think it's gonna depend on the size of your tank too. So after this four gallons, I'm gonna to need to add about 20 gallons to each tank. So that's gonna take a little while. Uh, and I'll show you how I do that. 
Okay, so there are two ways that you can add the appropriate amount of water to your tank for the second phase of it. You can either just keep filling up and dumping your five gallon bucket and use simple addition, or if you have a water meter like we do, you can turn on your sink, check your water meter, get an estimate for what your flow is, do the math and figure out how long it's gonna take, or just keep checking the meter. I'm gonna use the meter method because I don't feel like standing here waiting for buckets to fill up over and over and over again. We have these save a drop meters. I'm gonna reset this one. I'll be using this one when I get ready to do the front black tank. That's my black tank flush. It's still plugged in from flushing the black tank. All right, I think that will suffice. Voila. So now I'm gonna go outside and fill the black tank just using the black tank flush. I'll use the same method I did with the sink and I'll do a timer. Gonna make my next bucket, this time for the front gray tank. What is this, round three? Round three, ding, ding, ding. Oh, I almost spilled it. <laughs> <laughs> I was debating on whether to dump this in the sink or here. I'll do a little bit of both, per Tara's advice. All I'm going to do is use the same method that I used for the kitchen sink, except now I can turn on two things. I'm going to turn on this and the shower and A, rinse everything out and B, get about 25, 30 gallons into our front gray tank. Okay, we've got the front gray and front black treated. We've got the middle gray treated. We're going to hold off on the rear because we don't want to cheat and have it agitated by our manual process also. So I am going to use our leveling system. I wanna have a disclaimer here. This is not how you're supposed to use your leveling system. And I'm sure in fact that Lippert and Grand Design would both give it a big thumbs down. <laughs> but we've done manual leveling before and we've done this kind of before. Also, the slides are out and locked out. So I'm not too worried about those. Uh, I would want the slides either all the way in or all the way out, nowhere in between because of the shaking. Uh, I am going to pull up our steps so they're not, you know, doing a weird thing on the ground here. So pulling those up now. Ready to commence artificial earthquake agitation mode level one. Daisy's gonna freak out. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, it feels like the bottom's falling out. <laughs> oh, I don't like it. Terrible idea. <laughs> People are outside, like what? <laughs> People on? outside are like, their leveling system is all freaking out. So we've decided rather than do a full half hour of that Jack's gymnastics, we did it for maybe five minutes. We're gonna let it settle and sit, and then we will do it for another five minutes. Tara might have to leave. Yes. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna leave this in overnight just to get a little extra clean out of it and the rear black tank will be the same, but without the manual agitation. I don't know that shaking the RV with the jacks really did a whole lot. It's certainly not the recommended way to do it, but I think it might be a neat test. Either way, we'll let those sit overnight, and I'm gonna fill the rear tank now. All right, all of the tanks are full. Three of them slightly agitated, one just soaking, and we will come back in the morning pull the handles, see what it looks like when it comes out, because really that's our only way of telling, unless you're getting rid of a smell, which we know works. So we'll see you in the morning. The results are in. <laughs> and they weren't as- Spectacular. Spectacular yeah. as the very first time we did it, 
So we're going to do the front black tank first. I'll put you guys down to see the nitty gritty and we'll see what this stuff looks like. I'm surprised it doesn't look that bad actually. I wonder if because this tank gets flushed, you know, at least once a week and the gray tank uh, rarely gets flushed and has never been completely clean. But even the second time through on this kitchen gray tank, we still saw some discoloration in the water. And I think yeah. that's the primary source. Yeah, definitely with the food particles. And also it doesn't really get flushed because there's no really easy way to flush it other than just turning on the sink and letting it fill the tank up and then flushing it out. Both black tanks, you know, they get a thorough flush every time we dump. And the bathroom gray tank is just soapy water most of the yeah. time. And we're gonna try the front gray tank, which is the shower and bathroom sink. While the front gray is dumping, I don't want to forget to treat the black tank. Again, same company, different product. This is designed for odors and it works great. I will usually put three gallons into a completely empty tank just so it has water down there. Water is your friend in the black tank. Don't skimp on water when you're going to the bathroom or when you're filling it and flushing it. If you don't have enough water in the black tank, you can get a poo pyramid, which is really, really bad. All right, so the kitchen gray is dumping. Uh, since the rear black tank is a separate line, I'm gonna go ahead and start dumping that and we'll see what we get out of here. Since we didn't get anything out of the main black tank, I'm really expecting we won't get anything out of this one. We really should have done all the tanks on a travel day. Yeah. I do think that is the best way to get the best results that you're looking for as far as really bouncing around. And for us, we travel for the majority of the day. So, you know, hours and hours of Mm -hmm. Rocking around is, is definitely better than just sitting still. And it's definitely better than our ad hoc try to shake the RV <laughs> trip. Oh, I don't like it. By the way, again, not recommended. We just thought we'd try that. In hindsight, looking at it and thinking about the fact that we didn't do, do it for at least 30 minutes was, was kind of lame. Idea. It was a dumb idea. Also, we the hope tanks, it made you laugh. <laughs> also, the tanks are at the bottom of the RV, so when it's doing this, it's not like it's getting the same shaky feel that we get standing up here yeah. versus down in the basement. So dumb idea, don't do that. So if you're watching this, you know, after we release it by a few months, be sure to check the blog post. In fact, do that with all of our videos because any updates that we have, we can't update the video. So we update the blog post and we put big notes in there that say mm -hmm. update May, 2021. So check that out to see what the results were on that. I think the bottom line is it really did work on the primary source of the problem, which Big was time. this kitchen gray tank. And it doesn't smell, it was instant. And mm -hmm. I'm very happy, and I'm happy that I'm not gonna have to walk in on a travel day and be like, it smells in here. <laughs> now you might wonder about our sensors. Did it fix our sensors? Did no. <laughs> They're just not very good. They just, they work off of a little bit of voltage conducting electricity and if there's any bit of fouling on those they get a false reading and Ooh, i know i want to ask any of you if you've had any luck with any product out there to clean your tank sensors let us know in the comments yeah so without the sensors how do you know when your tanks are full it's real easy if you go to flush your toilet and it burps did you hear that a little bubble comes up, that means air has no other way to get out than through that hole and your tank is absolutely full and you need to dump it. If you're washing dishes and the sink stops draining, it's really stuffed up. Ah! Time to dump that tank. That's right. It's really not that difficult. Now the freshwater tank sensors always work really well and those are important. We also want to remind you guys, if you do this and you're dumping all that water through your toilet to make sure you reseal the seal. Yeah, the toilet seal. We have to do that probably about once a month anyway. It just gets dried out, you know, flushing, the water washes it off. Well, dumping this cleaner in there most definitely probably clears that plumbing grease off. So get yourself some plumber's grease and a rubber glove and just Move wipe that, that seal. seal real easy but that makes sure that that seals because if it yeah. drains it dries out and then it can actually ruin it 
From here on out, we're gonna start using this treatment, at least on the kitchen gray tanks, about every six months. So I don't have to smell the smells. Anymore. Or as necessary, meaning yes. when she smells stuff. Because yeah. I don't smell anything. Ever. That's, That's it. it, see ya. I am a happy camper. <laughs> Literally. Pun intended. <laughs> we have an odor problem. Big time. <laughs> <laughs> For this one, I'm gonna put a camera outside. I, no Daisy. Nope. <laughs> no. Daisy, just chill out. I'm not going anywhere. We're coming right back. She, just, she can't take it. I will as soon as the wind stops. We apologize for the weird noises. It's really, really windy. Like 30 something mile an hour winds. Yeah. Gusts gotta be at least 50. It's like a sandblast. Wait, it sounds there. better right now, so let's go. Go. Okay.